Welcome everyone to day eight of the second volume of the Chosen Devotional. Today's message is titled Love, and our anchoring passage for the day comes from Matthew 5, 43-48, which happens to be another passage that I've done a long study on in the Matthew series. So I will link that video in the description below if you want to check that out. That said though, the passage today reads, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if great, and if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Oof. There. We said it. Loving everyone, including your enemy, is a really beautiful sounding idea that is until you actually have an enemy. Then it sounds nuts and downright impossible. Also impossible? To be perfect like your Father in heaven? <laughs> Spoiler alert, though, God knows that we'll never be perfect this side of heaven. So why on earth did Jesus say it? And why did he waste his breath on such a lofty, unrealistic mandate like, love your enemies? Well, first of all, we don't have to look very far to know what not loving looks like. Just turn on the news to see how political enemies behave. The horrible behavior and Dialogue is everywhere that you look, on both sides of the aisle, which is no doubt one of the many reasons that Jesus didn't bother with politics. He didn't take sides because he's on his own side. And it's not just politics that puts humanity's broken brand of love on display. There are Twitter trolls, cyber bullies, and cancel culture warriors. There are feuds that land in divorce courts, family courts, probate court, civil court, and criminal court. And just like the Hatfields and McCoys, but without the hats. Uh, there are protest parades and boycotts, infighting and backstabbing, school shootings and prison sentences, class warfare and actual warfare. There's little compromise, no forgiveness, lots of paranoia, and far too much estrangement because we keep the proverbial chip on our shoulder, we give the brush off, and we get stuff stuck in our crop. And while it might feel good to lick our wounds and engage our bitterness, our way of loving and hating doesn't work. We're collectively miserable. We literally make ourselves sick with anger and hate, leading to panic attacks, heart attacks, insomnia, ulcers, and chronic pain in our backs and necks where we carry all of our stress and unresolved feelings. Our brows spend a ton of time furrowed, and we gift ourselves with permanent frown lines. And for what? Nothing good comes from hate. Whatever momentary self-satisfaction we experience when we entertain it leaves behind nothing but darkness and a hardness of heart like a cement that begins to cure while we're standing up in it to our knees. Considering our options, perhaps Jesus' command to love our enemies is as much for our own sake as theirs, because love moves us forward, out of the pain, hurt, loss, or selfishness that got us stuck there in the first place. So how do we love our enemies the way God loves his? One way, Jesus. As Philippians 4.13 tells us, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It is, in fact, too lofty a virtue for us to love our enemies. Apart from Jesus, we're simply not capable of sustaining such grace-filled, self-effacing, self-denying behavior. Even if we choose kindness momentarily, eventually the moment ends, and we're left with the hate that we begin with. But God's resources are endless. He never runs out of patience and mercy, never tires of doing good, never ceases to pursue us, forgive us, and lead us to greener pastures. And here's the really cool part. When we agree that Jesus died on the cross to forgive us from sin and rose again victoriously over that sin and all its consequences, the Holy Spirit then indwells within us, meaning that God lives in us, changing us and loving others in his impossible and perfect way through us. In our own strength, we'll never truly love our enemies. And on this side of heaven, we'll never be perfect the way God is perfect. But we're in the process of being made perfect because God is transforming us into the image of his son, the one who's perfect already, the one whose love has no boundaries and no end, the, the one who sacrificed on the cross made it possible for us to know him more and more, and the one that we'll spend eternity with, surrounded by people we helped love into heaven, maybe even our enemies. And with that, let us now take this moment to turn to prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, come to you today just giving you all the praise, honor, and glory, and we just ask that you, you search us, God. Um, search us for, for ways 
that, that we might be hating and denying um, love, um, especially to our enemies, Lord. And, and we just ask that you reveal that to us. Um, and, then, and then we just want to lift up those people that we view as our enemies. Um, it, we want to lift up their names to you, Lord, in praise. And, 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 just, and just ask that you bless them um, and also do a work in our heart um, so that it softens and we begin to see them as, as not our enemy, but as a wonderful creation that you have made for a very specific purpose on this earth, Lord. Um, it, we know that if it has flesh and a pulse, Lord, it's not our enemy. It's not. Um, we, we fight the battles that are on the spiritual war grounds, and, and, and Lord, we, we, we need to come together and view every person here at, on this earth as, as someone that you've created for a purpose that deserves love, um, even though we might not feel it, but we don't deserve love either, and yet you show it to us abundantly, and, and we are so grateful for that. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray all these things in your name. Amen. All right. And with that, we will wrap up today's video. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And until then, God bless and keep you.